Good afternoon. I hope that everybody is now online, back from the break, and can hear me. So I would welcome you to the second part of the info dates. My name is Annette Schneelands, and I will moderate the session dedicated to the mission A Soil Deal for Europe and its work program for 21. I'm replacing Kersi Rosenau, who you may have seen in the program, and unfortunately she cannot be with us today. As you can imagine, it is a particular pleasure for us to hold this info session, which deals with the very, very first work program of the recently launched mission, a soil deal for Europe. Before going into further detail on the mission and the topics, let me start by showing you how the session will develop. You can see here the overview of the agenda. It's a session that runs for about two hours and we need to finish quite sharply at four o'clock. So after my introduction on practicalities, we will start with a keynote speech held by, held by uh, the mission manager, Nathalie Soos van Viver and the deputy mission manager, Peter Wehrheim. We will then continue with the presentation of the eight topics of the work program. We have divided the, let's say, the overview of the topics in two blocks so that we can discuss four topics each and it's easy to collect um, and reply to your questions at the end of each of these blocks. Now, as to your input and your contribution to the session, um, let me remind you that you can use Slido throughout the session for any questions you may have. Also, we invite you to vote for some questions um, which you consider most interesting. And as to the use of Slido, please follow the steps shown in the slide. You can access Slido through this website, www.sly.do. Then you insert the hashtag missions info day to join the event and you select the room, which is called a soil deal for Europe. Or you can also simply scan the QR code that you see on the slide and select the appropriate room. To facilitate moderation of the Q&As, whenever you ask a question, please um, try and indicate to which topic you're referring to. So, for example, if you're interested in aspects related to the topic soil 0202 on indicators for soil health and functions, so please put the number 02 and then pose your questions. So, as you follow uh, the session, it would be great if you would also share your impressions and your comments through social media. There's a couple of channels that you can see here on the slide um, on Twitter. And so any promotion, let's say, of the event from your side and your reactions would be very, very much welcome. Now, before going into the substance, let's try and test um, Slido. You see here the QR code and to test it and know you a bit better, we would like to launch now a Slido poll. The Slido is about asking you which country is it where you are, oh, sorry, in which country is your organization based? Where are you working and sitting <laughs> right now? We'll leave you now with um, a minute so that you can reply and see if it works. Yes, it seems that it's working. Spain is very, very prominent, all in the center. Germany is getting speed. We'll see when we uh, have a more stable picture. 
But it's good to see. So in any case, we um, gather from your replies that there are participants from at least, I would say, at a last, at a quick glance, from all EU member states and some associated countries. Um, at the moment, most participants sit in Germany, the Netherlands, Spain, France, Belgium. Okay, I think it's a very nice representation and we can uh, happily say this is all working very well and that you, you have, um, so we don't know the organizations yet, but at least country-wise, we are very, very well covered with participants from all member states. So this gives us now um, a good overview, I think, of how we run the session, um, how you can participate, and now we will get to the substance. And I would like to introduce Nathalie Sos van der Wever. As I mentioned already, she's the mission manager of this mission, director at DG Agri, and she will be joined by Peter Wehrheim, the deputy mission manager from RTD, and both will introduce the content and the characteristics of the soil deal mission so that you can better um, place the topics in the context of the mission. Natalie and Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good, af good afternoon and thank you for being with us to discover uh, this afternoon the topics uh, that substantially launched the uh, implementation of our mission uh, Soil Deal for Europe. As uh, uh, Annette explained, I'm director uh, and mission manager, but I'm director in DG Agri, which is uh, quite important because, as you know, uh, the mission uh, a very specific tool linked with the other uh, policy, and in particular, uh, in our case, with the common agriculture policy. So now uh, I'm sure that uh, so can have the next slides, please. Um, I, I'm sure that uh, part of the audience uh, is already familiar uh, with the, the concept of mission, but I would like to start uh, with uh, for, with the beginning, the, the beginning of the story of this uh, of this mission. And uh, so uh, what are EU mission? EU mission are a novelty in the in the research uh, framework program Horizon Europe. They are a new instruments uh, to solve major societal challenges uh, to be setting a clear, inspirational and measurable goal to be achieved within a specific time frame. So uh, mission aspire to have an impact uh, on the on the society, and uh, you will see that uh, the five missions to be implemented under Horizon Europe uh, were officially launched uh, last year in September with the communication on the on the missions, and uh, we have now five missions, and you have probably for some of you already had the opportunity to participate to the session uh, on this mission. It's adaptation to climate change, cancer climate neutral in smart cities, restore our oceans and waters, and of course now a soil deal uh, for Europe. So uh, next slide please. Uh, so what uh, the mission intends to do, it's to mobilize actors across all sectors, but of course they are rooted uh, in the RNI uh, part. And uh, only to, to have a small reminder, uh, the, the mission are part of Horizon Europe pro program, and in particular uh, of its pillar two global challenges and European industrial competitiveness. And concerning the mission uh, on soil health, so, so of soil for Europe, the center of gravity is in the cluster six of uh, this pillar two. Uh, which are dealing with food, bioeconomy, uh, natural resources, agriculture and environment. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, the process uh, of development the mission start two years ago, and I must say I'm really proud to be at the beginning of this uh, of this long journey. Uh, it was very, very interesting uh, exercise. So. Um, 
The, 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 the beginning was uh, for the Commission to nominate the Mission Board, a high-level group of experts, and for our mission, the Mission Board was chaired by Kees Verman, a former agriculture and environmental minister from the Netherlands. And uh, the board delivered almost uh, one year later a proposal for a mission called Caring for Soil is Caring for Life. Uh, in developing the, the proposal, the mission board, of course, was not alone. They took into account the comments and the, the, uh, the contribution coming uh, from other experts, so which was the, the, the mission assembly, but also from uh, the, the member state, the stakeholders and the citizens, and uh, they, they, they participated to about uh, 60 events. Uh, and on the basis of this uh, mission board report, the Commission developed a more detailed implementation plan. And this implementation plan was published uh, with the Commission communication uh, last uh, September. And this marked, of course, the official launch of the, of the EU missions. And at the moment, uh, the call for a new mission board, because uh, we have to work with new experts, is open until the 2nd of February. And you have the chance today to discover more in detail uh, about the opportunities for funding under this mission that are currently open. So uh, that is, uh, I think, the right moment to have uh, this, uh, this info. So now, uh, next slide, please. Uh, we have to, to explain why a mission on soil health. Uh, first of all, it is estimated that 95% uh, of our food comes from soil. And healthy soil provide also key ecosystem services like water regulation, nutrient cycling, and carbon storage, uh, which is fundamental for climate adaptation and, and uh, the mitigation of climate adaptation. And of course, soil also has biodiversity and uh, carry out landscape. And it is important to recognize, and uh, we'll come later on, on that part, that uh, the, the mission uh, has a clear link with the various Green Deal strategies. Uh, but of course, the problem is soil is a very scarce and non renewable uh, resource. And that is, uh, for the moment, uh, under threat due to current management practices, pollution, urbanization, and uh, the effect of, uh, of the climate changes. Um, so, next slide, please. Um, to, to revert to this negative trends, uh, we need really to act urgently. And according to the analysis undertaken by the Mission Board and also our uh, joint a research center, about 60 to 70 percent of soils are not healthy. So, for example, between 665 and 75 percent uh, of agricultural soil show high nutrient level, uh, which is risk of eutrophication for soil and water. And we have also, uh, we, in this analysis, we can see that cropland and peatland soils are losing carbon and contribute to climate change. And almost uh, a quarter of EU land is facing an unsustainable water region rate. And in the south and, and central and also eastern Europe, there is clearly a risk of uh, desertification. And you have seen last summer, the, the recent floods have shown that uh, what can happen when soils do not longer absorb water and how quickly productive topsoil can be washed away. So we need urgently to act. So next slide, please. Um, uh, as already explained, so the mission is com complementary uh, to, to other uh, policy or other type of uh, strategy uh, put in place by, by the commission. It is particularly the case with the uh, new soil strategy uh, adopted uh, at the end of last year and uh, the European Soil Observatory, which was put in place uh, a little bit earlier. So it's really a novel approach uh, to RNIs as it combines research innovation activities, local testing rounds, monitoring and training activities, really in a joint manner to reach an ambitious goal. So it mobilizes actors across the EU going beyond the research community and engaging a much broader public from member state to region and municipalities. And we have not to forget the citizens. 
Next slide, please. So, as I said, uh, the soil lean mission is highly relevant in the context uh, of the Green Deal. Uh, under the Green Deal, the, the current Commission has set out very ambitious policies to become uh, by 2050 the first climate neutral continent and to lead a fair and just transition to sustainable production and, and consumption. Um, as you can see in the slide, several Green Deal strategy mentions the Soil Deal mission as an instrument needed to achieve the targets. And uh, for example, you have, of course, the 25% for the, the organic production as uh, until the organization of uh, our director general, I was also responsible for organic. So it was really, uh, I was well placed to, to, to see the link between the, the, the two tools and uh, in particular, the action plan we put in place last, uh, last year, but we have also the reduction of the use of pesticides and fertilizer, the uh, reduction of nutrient losses, and um, of course, uh, the reduction of microplastic pollution. And this required actions uh, in the way we manage uh, our soils. Next slide, please. So what is now the, the mission uh, soil deal about? So the mission's overall goal is to set up uh, under living labs and lighthouses to lead to the wider transition to healthy soil by 2030. That is now the complete title of our mission. Um, and this mission goal is backed by eight specific objectives that address main soil challenges, uh, such as the desertification, conserving soil carbon stock, the soil sealing, the pollution and erosion, and also enhancing soil structure and soil biodiversity. But uh, with the six specific objectives, we have also two cross-cutting objectives that address our global soil footprint and the soil literacy in society. Each of these objectives uh, are quantified target as quantified and measurable indicators. And it's important to, to highlight that the mission is not limited to uh, target agricultural soil, but aim also to improve the health of all type of soil from rural to urban areas. And of course, uh, we have not to forget forest. So now I will pass the floor to, to Peter Verheim, uh, our deputy mission manager and head of the, the Bioeconomy and Food System Unit in DGRTD, and he will complement uh, this patient presentation. Please, uh, Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Natalie, and uh, yes, uh, good afternoon to everyone listening into this uh, uh, info days on the soil mission. Pleasure um, to join you. Um, on the work program amendment that will prepare the ground for achieving um, the goals of the uh, soil mission. My um, colleagues uh, Giuseppe Pellegrino and Giulia Meloni and I are based in DG Research and Innovation and we work on research innovation related uh, to the upstream part of the food systems and the bioeconomy and together with uh, the colleagues in DG Agri we are co-creating the soil mission. So I will now focus on the implementation of the um, soil mission. You see here on this slide uh, um, that um, um, the soil mission will be a joint endeavor by researchers, land managers, uh, businesses, farmers, foresters, uh, spatial planners, citizens, and of course, uh, public authorities um, from municipalities to regions, member states um, and the EU level. Um, it will be inter um, implemented through these uh, four building blocks, which you see here on this uh, slide. Um, the, the first one consists um, of an ambitious research and innovation program with a very strong social science component um, to fill the existing uh, knowledge gaps. The second building blocks will develop um, a network of 100 living laboratories and lighthouses. Uh, these uh, living labs are um, real life um, testing sites in about 100 regions um, for experimentation, demonstration and upscaling of uh, uh, solutions that will help to improve soil health. The third building block, which you see is uh, on soil monitoring. Um, currently, there is no current um, re uh, legal requirement 
uh, for EU member states uh, to report on soils and only six to seven member states have active uh, soil monitoring uh, programs. The mission aims um, at developing um, a more harmonized framework for soil monitoring and reporting in the EU. This will allow us to better track the impact um, and uh, not just for the um, mission activities, but um, also for uh, soil related measures and policies overall. Um, and the overall um, collaboration with uh, the European uh, Soil Observatory, which you see on the lower left hand side, uh, is also key for this uh, building block. Um, under the fourth building block in the upper left hand corner, um, um, the mission aims at enhancing awareness on the importance of soils for our well being um, and at changing the way Europeans value this vital uh, uh, resource. It will strengthen citizen participation in soil related activities, reward best practices, and also promote um, tailor made uh, education and training. Uh, solutions related uh, to soils. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here, um, um, let me um, go a little bit into more detail on the concept of living labs and lighthouses, which are, as indicated, a central element uh, uh, for the implementation of this mission. Um, they are, the living labs are real life sites to test and develop innovation that will help to improve soil health. Uh, it's important to understand that um, a living uh, lab itself consists of a cluster of about 10 to 20 sites at regional or sub-regional level. Uh, and these can be um, different sites. It can be farms, forest stands, uh, urban or industrial sites, uh, as the uh, mission is overall um, targeting all types of uh, soils. So by aiming um, at setting up 100 living labs, we are talking about uh, 1000 to 2000 uh, sites in which people from from various sectors and uh, backgrounds are experimenting and testing solutions to enhance uh, soil uh, conditions. Uh, in combination with living labs, we have the lighthouses and they are individual sites such as uh, single farms or one industrial site or an urban city green area. Um, that are exemplary uh, with regard to a certain um, um, soil enhancing uh, practice. These lighthouses can be within or outside uh, um, of a um, living um, lab. Developing um, a robust network of living labs will be quite a challenge and we therefore foresee a gradual expansion. You see that on the, um, the lower right hand side uh, graph. Um, and scaling up of that network until 2027. Um, the, the concept of living labs as such is not uh, new, but uh, the, the general concept uh, had to be adapted to uh, the specific um, um, characteristics of the uh, soil mission. The um, commission together with the mission board um, developed specific criteria um, for what would qualify as uh, um, living labs. And this is a uh, necessary to ensure a common approach and be able to compare experiences and results in a, a systemic um, way. Uh, next slide, please. Um, let me here highlight that communication and engagement with citizens uh, and stakeholders is a central element of this uh, mission as of all other missions as well. Um, already during the inception phase of the soil mission, we have uh, reached out to a wide number of audiences uh, through various events. You see a couple of photos of uh, uh, past events, uh, including uh, by participating in major fairs, audiovisual materials, uh, uh, social media articles, and a survey with um, more than 2,500 replies. Uh, um, you find more information on all of these also on our internet site. Um, and the feedback we have received in these communication activities uh, um, has been very encouraging and uh, has shown a genuine interest also of a diverse uh, audience, including uh, researchers, but also the farming community, school students uh, and businesses uh, interested in soils and in the mission. We want to continue and extend this dialogue with stakeholders and work uh, closely with citizens to change 
also the way society values and sees uh, soils. Uh, in the end, we all depend on healthy soils and it's our mission to, to heal uh, the, the earth uh, um, together. Um, next slide, please. So how are we going forward now? Um, the uh, first call for proposals uh, was uh, published uh, um, last year. The project to be financed under that uh, topic will help to build uh, capacities for engagement, uh, outreach and knowledge. Proposals are at the moment under evaluation. Uh, the next step, and this is also the reason why we are here today, uh, is the update of the work program 2021, um, in, uh, which has been published uh, end of December last year with a deadline um, for submission of the proposals end of March 2022. The eight topics included in this work program amendment uh, will be presented in the consecutive um, session. The, at the same time, the Commission services are also preparing the Mission Work Program 2022, um, um, in which uh, um, additional topics uh, addressing um, the objectives of the mission um, um, as presented in the impl implementation plan of the soil mission will uh, be included. The um, success of the, the mission, a soil deal for Europe, will be integral uh, to the success of the European Green Deal. We want to really show a new way of doing research, uh, crossing disciplines and uh, involving a wide range of uh, stakeholders um, across uh, uh, member states. Um, we are counting on you uh, to help us with, your, with our common goals. And I, I really hope that uh, your communities, that you will participate very actively in the calls. Um, last but not least, on um, the last slide, uh, um, please show the next slide. Um, you will see also various um, um, existing links um, and uh, published documents related to the soil mission. I invite you to discover uh, uh, more details on the soil mission um, on these links. Um, and uh, uh, thank you for your attention. And I uh, pass back uh, to Annette Schneegas. Yes, thank you so much, Nathalie and Peter, for your very interesting and comprehensive presentation. And I'm sure that uh, it has given to the audience a good overview of what we want to achieve with the mission and how the topics that we will discuss later today link up with the content of the mission, the various building blocks and the ambition. Now, um, the participants of this session have the opportunity for questions, if any, and as mentioned, please, if you have questions, um, go to Slido. And um, I hope that we can see them on screen. I see them very, but very, very, this, uh, yeah, very small. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, so I start with the ones on the top. Uh, the first question is about, is there a designated place for animal three? So reduce, replace, refine in the scope of living labs. And I think I will also go uh, to the second one, which is also about more farm level. Um, no, I, I will keep the first one. So about animals. Um, you have certainly heard from the presentation that the idea of living labs lighthouses is really a comprehensive one and bottom up. So we cannot tell right now exactly which kind of topics we will have um, dealt with in living labs. Um, but certainly manual animals and the relation between crop, so let's say mixed cropping systems the relation between this and the effect on soil health is something that we foresee to be to be dealt with. But of course, we cannot be as detailed now because living labs don't yet exist. They will be set up depending on the needs in the regions that are selected and the needs that have are expressed in the proposals coming up. So we'll have to see. There was um, a second question uh, on a very specific farm issue. I cannot see it now. So can you elaborate more on the role of the mission board? Is there a way to contribute to their work? Um, I think Natalie may wish to, yeah. to respond to that one. 
Yes, I think so. So now, as I explained, we have launched a, a new call uh, because, of course, the, the the first mission board was to develop this idea of of the of the mission to have the the, the analysis. The base. But now, uh, we will need different type of expert. Uh, as you have seen, you have the four building blocks, and uh, that will be uh, useful for 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 us. Uh, to have the possibility uh, when we are developing uh, the, the, these four building blocks to, to have different type of uh, expertise. But of course, uh, the, the, the mission board could be also the ambassador of the mission. So we have the two type of uh, activities. But uh, so that's the reason I'm encouraging you to, to, to have a look to what we are looking uh, for. But uh, um, during the implementation, and you have seen that it's a long term uh, implementation, we will need the, the expertise from different sides. But uh, I don't know, Peter, if you want to add something. Well, the, the, the mission board, uh, um, of course, uh, was uh, extremely helpful in developing um, the, the first ideas and the concepts. And uh, um, yes, as, as you said, we are now looking for um, a new mission board. The call is open. I think that's very important for all participants to take note of. Uh, um, and to apply um, and uh, the task will be to really underpin uh, and help in the rollout um, of, of the mission implementation. So let's see if there are one or two more questions. How about the forest soil? Are they included? Um, Nathalie yes. or Nathalie, yes. want to answer? Yes. Yes. Uh, as I mentioned, we are covering all type of soil. Not only, of course, agricultural soil uh, has a, a big place in the, in this mission, but we are also covering forest and we are also covering urban soil. So uh, it's an idea. Uh, if we want to uh, uh, achieve our objectives, uh, we have to cover because uh, uh, it's not possible to to have this clear. Uh, separation be between the different type of soil, but of course the measure probably will not exactly be the same because there is specificity in the in the the the, the street for for the for this type of soil. But uh, I don't know, Annette, do you want to to add uh, also a more detailed uh, elements? No, I think uh, you you replied concretely that we really aim to address all the land users and forest soils is something the mission board has observed have been neglected in the past so um, you can certainly foresee also actions in this area maybe you take one or two more questions and then go on to the substance um, the submission deadline is very close for the soil mission compared to the other mission deadlines can we expect an extension of the deadline um, no. So, um, Natalie, I think it's. Um, yeah, I think the um, no. In fact, I don't think so. Except that if there is uh, specific circumstances, but in principle, uh, the deadline yeah. is fixed, and uh, uh, I'm not sure that there is so big difference with the other uh, other missions. But uh, uh, there is also a clear timeline because we have the call, but after the, we have the evaluation, and if we want to implement to start the implementation. That's the reason we were a little bit reasonable in our call with only eight topics, uh, because we want to start slowly, but uh, to put all the, the basis for this mission. And uh, so uh, according, I accepted yeah, our colleagues, uh, but I don't know if there is somebody from uh, uh, also from our executive agency who want to, to answer on that. But uh, for me, the, the, the deadline is fixed. No, it is indeed. So this is something we have in the call conditions and there's no change in deadlines. We we appreciate it. It's, it's of course, we acknowledge it's all very um, tight. Now, I take the last two ones here. Uh, is there a definition of what healthy soil means? That's actually quite a, a good one. <laughs> a very good question. And um, yes, who would like to answer to that one? Maybe I can um, um, start out on, on, on that one, uh, Annette. Uh, yes, uh, healthy soils are not defined through one sing single um, aspect. Uh, um, it's a combination of uh, 
um, different um, um, factors which um, um, define uh, um, soil health. Um, and uh, I think uh, in in the, um, um, the scoping paper of the mission, but also in the uh, implementation plan, uh, um, a clear list of indicators has also been identified also with benchmarks, uh, um, and that has been done on the basis of scientific uh, um, um, evidence, uh, um, looking um, um, based, based on which uh, overall soil health can be defined. So it's a combination of different uh, aspects. We are looking at uh, uh, the degree of uh, decertification, uh, um, soil organic uh, um, uh, content, uh, and, and the loss of it, and uh, um, soil soil sealing and uh, soil structure um, and uh, um, micro um, uh, biodiversity and and different indicators which are the basis for defining what is uh, um, unhealthy or can be a, a move towards healthy soils. Yes, I think we'll come back to this question. We discussed topic zero two zero two, which is on soil health indicators and monitoring. Okay, I think we can take one more and then we, we move on. Um, can you please provide us with some examples of sites under living labs, farms, urban areas, industrial sites? Um, and I think let's take the second one underneath because, no, sorry, the, Two below, there's also something on living lights and uh, living lab network. Maybe we can show it all together. Uh, could you please provide us? No. How does the agriculture process for living lab lighthouse work? Uh, I think these two ones. Um, do you want uh, Paula to deal with them now, or share we deal with them when you present your topic uh, number zero seven? I think at the end. We have a topic on engagement sessions for living labs. And maybe we can talk about this because it's more subtle and quite quite specific. If you agree, we take it there. We come back to this. I, I've made notes of the questions and um, we come back to that. So I think there was just another one which was not about living labs. And this is the one at the bottom here. Can you elaborate on the role of research in this mission and how, to what extent, research organizations can take part in the mission? So this is all about who can apply. Um, Natalie, do you want to reply to this one? Or Peter? Yes, of course, uh, who can apply. You, you have the, the, the now the call and you have the, the, the detailed information, but of course it depends a little bit of the topics. And, and your role, but the, uh, as we mentioned, uh, the research is a, a, a big part of our, 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 the implementation of the mission. It's one of the, 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 the building blocks and depending on the topics, uh, you, you will have the, the we are, we, as explained, we want to have the different actors. And so the contribution uh, of the different actors will be very useful to, to, to build this, uh, the, 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 the the mission as such, not the mission, but the, the different activities. And uh, so it depends a little bit of, of, the, of, the, of the subject, but of course uh, uh, it's like for the, for the other calls on research, uh, you have a certain number of criteria for, for the application. I don't know, Peter, do you want to complement this? No, okay. No, you will see in any case, when we go now through the topics that, um, the most of them, of course, they require research to a certain extent. They go down to higher TRA levels. And of course, researchers, uh, research institutions are all represented in the topics and needed to, to advance, not just, uh, um, let's say, the knowledge, but also to implement, to translate the knowledge into practice. So, but this we will see now as we go through the topics. So, I suggest. Um, that we move on um, to topics just before getting into each of the single ones. Um, we would like to test uh, a second Slido based on the question, tell us in one word what comes to your mind when you read 
100 living labs and lighthouses. And we have now a minute or so for you to, to propose your ideas. Yes, we see the first ideas coming up, which reflect very, very much also what we have in the uh, mission implementation plan. And so it seems that you grasped from the presentations of Nathalie and Peter and, and from what you know about, you grasped really the idea that soil health, all the soil restoration, soil preservation is a collective effort by which we want to cooperate, to create new partnerships, create networks. The living labs, lighthouses, obviously, are well reflected through network, demonstration, then there's the whole element of education, testing. I see one word which is interesting, if I read correctly, confusion. <laughs> I don't know if it's just my eyes. Okay, there's one confusion, otherwise all the rest seems to reflect very much the spirit of the mission as, a, I would say, a really a joint journey by which we want to test ambitious approaches and implement them on the ground. Thank you so much for your ideas. And I think that now we are ready to start with the topics. You certainly noted that the work program is very much about building the foundations for implementing the various building blocks of the mission. My colleague Marta Iglesias will guide you now through the topic 0201 entitled From Knowledge Gaps to Roadmaps on Soil Mission Objectives. And please remember that you can ask questions at any time using Slido. I'm now handing over to Marta. So hello, it's a pleasure for me to present to you today this uh, first topic under the updated work program for the mission for 2021, called From Knowledge Gap to the roadmaps on soil objectives. The instrument selected for this topic is a coordination and support action. So the successful implementation of the mission, and in particular this topic, uh, supports the, the several EU policies and international commitments in the area of land degradation, neutrality, food and nutrition security, climate and biodiversity. But in particular, this topic uh, will, is developed in the context of the European Green Deal and its various strategies, for example, the Farm to Fork strategy, the biodiversity strategy and its new soil strategy, also the zero pollution uh, ambition, the forestry strategy or the common agricultural policy or the long term vision for rural areas. But also, as I said before, international commitments such as the sustainable development goals. So selected proposals on this, this topic will be part of a wider portfolio of mission activities and should contribute to the successful deployment of the mission. But in particular, the selected proposal under this topic will be part of the RNI program building block, as it has been described under the mission implementation plan, and should set out credible pathways to progress towards the mission's goals and objectives. So the RNI building block intends to synthesize, integrate, share and exchange knowledge on soil health and drivers of soil health within different socioeconomic and cultural contexts from different disciplines, sectors and land uses. It is expected that activities under this topic will contribute to all of the following impacts. First, gain a better understanding of the major knowledge gap on soil health as well as the causes, consequences, drivers and barriers to soil health. Improve our ability to evaluate the potential trade-offs between mission objectives. Establish dynamic work roadmaps 
to support the development and coordination of a coherent portfolio of research and innovation, but all the, also other activities for, the mission of, for, for each of the mission objectives. Increased capacities to develop, monitor and evaluate the mission's activities based on a common understanding of needs, identified priorities for action, and up-to-date information or new knowledge emerging from mission activities and other programs. For the effective coordination and implementation of the mission activities, it is important to have a detailed view of, of already existing knowledge, main knowledge gaps, drivers of soil health, as well as a common understanding of pathways, research and innovation and other actions to act on soil health. Therefore, for each of the mission specific objectives, a roadmap should be developed. These roadmaps will take into consideration the needs of different disciplines and sectors as well as different types of soils, land uses, and climate zones in Europe. In particular, it is important to identify research and innovation needs for land uses that have received less attention in the past. So it is requested that proposal we provide a comprehensive practice-oriented analysis of drivers of soil health for different socioeconomic contexts, including public policies and cultural diversities. Proposals should assess, integrate and synthesize current knowledge and knowledge gaps in connection to the eight mission objectives. As new scientific evidence will emerge, this analysis should be updated on a regular basis through the project. It should also allow to display total research and innovation activities on soils geographically distributed across the member states and associated countries, as well as suggest an extra steps to address any imbalances. The activities should produce a systemic, easily accessible and up-to-date overview of key recent and ongoing r and initiatives, as well as their outcomes in connection to the eight mission objectives, including as appropriate major international initiatives. The roadmap should include interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary research and innovation priorities and are expected and the expected results as well as the technical and socioeconomic options to reach each of the mission objectives, both in the short and long term, are also expected. The roadmaps should provide a timeline for action, including expected outputs and outcomes, and suggest measurable key performance indicators to monitor progress toward each of the specific objectives. They should provide an operational framework to oversee, monitor and assess the mission evolving research and innovation portfolio against the identified objectives and expected outcomes within the time frame proposed. The activities will be, uh, will be based on available knowledge and activities of projects related to soil health. Involve a wide range of actors, from researchers to land managers, policy makers, economic actors, civil societies, and other stakeholders. It should make use of the potential of the digital technologies, including artificial intelligence and Internet of Things. Activities should be undertaken in close cooperation with the Mission Secretariat, the Mission Board, and built upon the existing national and European resources such as the Horizon Resource Platform, the European Innovation Partnership, the EIP AGRI, relevant knowledge centers of the Joint Research Center and the new EU Soil Observatory. The, the project duration should be a minimum of four to five years to allow as much as possible the constant update of the eight roadmaps. With this, I finish here my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Marta, for your presentation. Um, as I said, we will go through four presentations at once before giving you the floor. So in the next presentation, you will see myself again uh, in a recorded version. It's about topic soil 0202, validating and further developing indicators for soil health and functions. In here you will grasp a bit how we try and approach the, the definition and the monitoring of soil health. So we will now launch the video. Good afternoon. I'm going to present the work program 21 topic, Soil 0202, validating and further developing indicators for soil health and functions. 
This topic contributes to the emissions building block on soil monitoring. So what is the issue? Why does the soil emission have such a strong focus on soil monitoring? Effective soil monitoring is the basis for knowing about the state of our soils and about any changes that may occur to soil properties over time. It is also the basis for better understanding which interventions have a positive or negative effect on soils. As you can imagine, this is important when designing and applying measures for soil management or when developing policies to promote soil health. Despite the importance of soil monitoring, only a few countries in Europe have active soil monitoring programs. And where we have data indicators or, or sampling methodologies, these are not always comparable across EU member states. So there's a clear need not only to intensify the extent uh, at which we undertake soil monitoring, but also there's a need to harmonize methods for soil monitoring. The selected project is expected to address this need. Its results should contribute to um, agreeing in a much more common way, let's say, on what is soil health and what are indicators by which we can measure reliably soil health. Based on a set of robust indicators, we should then be able to advance our capacities for monitoring soil health. And this will support the development of policies and of measures for sustainable soil management. On the long term, we expect to advance the state of play in Europe at which we can harmonize the ways in which we monitor. So let me um, go up more into detail on what a proposals and um, so the consortia should propose in their applications. First of all, they should test the eight indicators for soil health that were proposed by the mission board and that are described in the mission implementation plan. We'll find in the topic the link to the implementation plan and where you find these indicators. So testing these indicators should serve to assess whether they are fit for purpose. This means if they are measurable in reliable ways, in easy ways, of course, as well, and whether they allow to track progress towards soil health and to the eight specific mission objectives. The, uh, the eight specific mission objectives you will also find in the implementation plan. Now, if um, projects identify that these indicators proposed are not appropriate, then they should propose alternative ones. And these alternative indicators should also be easy to measure, unambiguous and scalable. Then project partners are also asked to identify proxies for soil health. This means any case that's based, for example, projects should um, harmonize and benchmark the proposed indicators for range of soil types, land uses, and climatic zones. The indicators proposed, of course, should be updated as per progresses and as the various monitoring campaigns or testing rounds deliver new data. And uh, the recommendations for sampling, which are also requested, should then support the upcoming Lucas campaign in 25-26. Finally, Results should support the development of a soil health dashboard under the EU Soil Observatory. The budget for the selected project is up to 12 million euros. And some important conditions to recall are that if um, applicants make use of Earth observation, then there's a need to make use of Copernicus and or Galileo or Egnos. And of course, other tools can be used as well. As you've seen already in the presentation, the cooperation with the GRC, the Joint Research Center, is really central. And the GRC is allowed to be a partner in the consortium. In addition, we expect cooperation with the European Environmental Agency and the Horizon 2020 project EGP SOL. With this, uh, I'd like to close this presentation. Thank you. Okay, so you have heard 
the second topic of the web program, and we'll proceed straight away with topic 0203 called Linking Soil Health to a Nutritional and Safe Food. And that topic will be presented by Grino. Go ahead, Giuseppe. Many thanks, Annette. Good afternoon, uh, everyone, uh, and particularly uh, good afternoon to future applicants. I'm going to present the work uh, program 2021 uh, topic uh, 0203, uh, linking soil health to nutrition and safe food, which is a research and innovation action. Next. Uh, the topic uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, contributes to the building blocks of uh, LNI of the mission, but also living labs. Uh, the policy context is uh, notably the European Green Deal uh, and the new soil strategy, the farm to fork, zero pollution action plan, the new biodiversity strategy, but also uh, the European Soil Observatory, particularly also the EU Food 2030 strategy, uh, the Organic Action Plan, the CAP. Uh, why this topic? Uh, we want to have uh, an improved understanding of the soil health and food nexus in order to promote uh, the development of uh, a coherent portfolio of food system uh, research activities in line with the, or, uh, the Food 2030 initiatives. Um, we want also to have uh, a further understanding uh, of the interlink interlinkages between farming practices, the soil health, and we want to have more insights on the full, uh, four food quality dimensions, which are nutri nut nutritional compositions, tasteness or palatability, uh, safety and technological property. But we also want to, to have an engaged stakeholder throughout all the components of the food systems, uh, an increased public awareness uh, with uh, a business interest uh, on the connection of soil health and food quality. Uh, we also want to have more mutual learnings, experimentations uh, through all the uh, living through the living labs uh, in Europe. Next slide, please. So uh, the scope uh, is that uh, to, to develop uh, and, 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 and strengthen legitimacy and robustness uh, of, of the link soil food quality uh, through an engaged interdisciplinary community of scientists uh, to develop uh, uh, key performance uh, indicators uh, that are easy to measure, at, but importantly, that elicit the connection between soil health and food quality. Uh, we, we, the scope is also to list potential mechanisms for improved uh, food nutritional quality through soil health. Um, proposal uh, should uh, build on available knowledge, uh, involve a range of actors and uh, address trade-offs. Uh, the indicative budget is of 7 uh, million euro uh, per one project. And it is important that the project uh, uh, builds on existing uh, uh, national and European resources, such as the Horizon uh, Result Platform, but also the AT Food Initiatives. And with this, uh, I pass over to Annette again. Thanks. I think I'm still muted. OK, Giuseppe, thank you so much for your presentation. And we will now go through the fourth and last topic of this block. Uh, the topic will be presented by my colleague Marc Duponcel, and uh, it is called Social, Economic and Cultural Factors Driving Land Management and Land Degradation. Marc, the floor is yours. Thank you, Annette. Um... I will present to you the last topic of this uh, cluster of four topics, but that's not the least interesting. So, social, economic, and cultural factors driving land management and land degradation. This is a uh, research and innovation action. Uh, yeah, okay, so um, I will uh, provide you first a bit of a political policy context, then expected outcomes, and then we'll go to, uh, to the scope. 
And some important things that you should not um, forget um, to uh, check before you uh, finalize your proposal in the um, in the machinery. So regarding the policy context, I mean, what I have put here is uh, stuff that you all perfectly know, which I got from uh, uh, from the uh, the different reports that have been um, prepared within the context of the the mission, we have 60, 70 people percent of soils that are considered an LC. Um, we have soil degradation, which is prevalent and extensive in um, the all uh, EU territory, and there are some estimations of the associated cost, which would be. Uh, in excess of uh, 50 billion euros uh, per year, which is absolutely considerable. Hence, avoiding soil degradation and fostering soil health is for a large part conditional upon the land management practices implemented by, uh, by land uh, managers, whether they are um, farmers, the industry, foresters, or um, so what do we want to do with this uh, this topic, which is uh, with the other topics of this uh, work program is uh, meant also to, uh, to lay the basis for uh, the work of the of the mission. We want increased uh, evidence on the main factors that drive land management and land degradation as a basis for actions by policymakers, land managers and other stakeholders. We want also to, in the end, to have a toolbox for policy solutions to set, condi to set conditions and promote practices that are conducive to better soil health and avoid uh, degradation. And we want enhanced capacities for risk assessment and risk management through increased awareness and knowledge on uh, hotspots of land degradation, in particular um, in Europe. Uh, in, Next slide, please, uh, Jory. Thanks. So what do we expect uh, project proposals uh, to offer? Of course, I mean, to study the role of various factors in soil health and land de degradation, economic factors, social factors, cultural aspects. Uh, there are a number of examples that are, uh, that are mentioned in the um, in the uh, topic description, polluted pay principle, for instance, for economic factors, costs and benefits of prevention, prices of ag agricultural products, land market, land uh, land prices, and uh, and other um, for social factors. <clears throat> well, that that can include social cohesion, income inequalities. Population density, farm structures, uh, the rural economy, and regarding uh, cultural aspects, there could be education, product uh, preferences of consumers, environmental awareness, uh, strengths of uh, governance, and uh, and public uh, institutions. Second aspect is to uh, to identify the most important aspects that drive land management and land degradation with a view to elaborate integrated approaches, policies and strategies contributing to lifting the constraints, impeding soil health recovery and land improvement and enable sustainable land management. We also would like to see the development and test of uh, tools to assess risks as well as to identify and visualize hot, hot spots, sorry, of land degradation across uh, across Europe, and then provide testing grounds for the demonstration of solutions in response to specific types of uh, land degradation, whether that's uh, pollution, erosion, biodiversity loss, carbon losses, um, desertification. Um, so this is a uh, research and innovation action. This uh, will be with an indicative budget of uh, 10 million euros. Uh, we expect to, uh, to finance two projects, which uh, we expect uh, that they will also uh, uh, work in relation to each other. Um, so important things that uh, you should not forget that uh, you take into account the diversity, diversity 
of uh, geographical uh, situations in the EU, that also you deal with the diversity of uh, soil management and land management. I mean, not just agriculture, but also forestry, cities, industrial sites, and so on. Uh, quite obviously, this is a topic that uh, will involve a big uh, input of uh, social science and humanities, and socioeconomic work, sociologists, geographers, economists should uh, should be uh, involved in this uh, in this topic. And there is also uh, a requirement that uh, you take into account the uh, potential of uh, digital technologies and also that uh, you uh, take uh, stock of uh, some uh, findings of uh, current projects. Several have been uh, mentioned in the, in, in the project, uh, in the topic description, sorry. And then international cooperation is also uh, encouraged uh, for, uh, for this topic. And I will uh, stop here, Annette. Yes, thank you, Mark. This was a very comprehensive presentation. And we come now to, to your, I think, very pertinent questions to clarify issues that may not be so clear from the web program. Uh, I've seen that there is a number of, of questions coming in. And I would like to suggest that we go uh, topic by topic, so that we pull together the ones first, for example, relating to topic 01. Is this possible? to show just zero one? Oh, I, I hear we cannot go topic by topic then. Well, um, is it, I've seen, is it possible to see the zero two ones? So the zero one topics only, no. Okay, then we, um, what we do is I see that we have here some questions just relating to zero two. Um, so let me see if I can read them out or I go myself to Slido. So zero two topic has many overlaps with what is already done within the framework of EGP soil, CSA or CMS. How do you see the interactions? How is the participation of the GRC to be implemented? Um, this is also for zero two, but for others as well. Um, and if you just go up one, and so if we can take a third one on zero two. No, I don't see them. Go. So we start with this ones. So on zero two, um, this is the topic on validating and further developing indicators for soil health functions. The named initiatives, EGP Soils, SMS, um, are of course looking as well at the indicators proposed by the mission board, but A, not on such detail, and B, only in the area, HP only does in the area of agriculture. What the topic zero two really wants is that we have a very thorough research project just testing the suitability of the proposed indicators for, let's say, reliable, but also user-friendly monitoring of soil health in all types of land uses. This is, I think, the issue you should consider a lot. It's not just about agriculture. Do the indicators also apply to monitoring soil changes in soil health, in forest soils, in urban soils? If they're not easy to monitor, um, some of you were asking about the role of in-situ monitoring, then the selected project should also look into proxies for soil health. So can we use management practices as a proxy for establishing changes in soil health or for predicting changes in soil health? So this is the, the um, overall orientation of the topic. Now, the GRC is, of course, a very important partner. And you will see under conditions, call conditions, if they can be a full partner in the project, then you can approach them and discuss with them whether they want to be a full partner. Or in any case, when you implement the project, we would like that you cooperate very closely with the Joint Research Centre 
since they are running the Lucas monitoring program of SOLS, so they are also looking into SOL indicators, and that should be a like a harmonized framework. And all of that should, of course, lead at some point to harmonized soil monitoring. Um, and for you to know that, the, so the GRC would join the consortium at a later stage, not at the stage of the proposal, but later after or during negotiations. Um, this is what I've seen for zero two. I wonder if we can go to another topic, zero one or zero three and four. So there is a question for Giuseppe on zero three. Does food safety notion can include health risks associated with pathogenic bacteria that are present in the soil and likely to contaminate agricultural products? Where is your view on this, uh, Giuseppe? Thanks, Annette. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, it does. It does include uh, food safety from zoological uh, Mm, bacteria or so whatever. And so yeah, uh, it, it includes food safety and I would also encourage to visit uh, the EU uh, European Commission uh, food safety web page and you can refer to the food safety that uh, is there. Thanks. Hope was clear. Okay, thank you, Josep. I hope um, that we can also see other questions related to three, then you could do all of them at once. Um, I see more for two at the moment. Okay, then I go back to um, zero two on soil indicators and monitoring. If the field experiments expected in um, the projects, how many pilot sites? Um, should they cover all land uses, climate zones? Could other type of, um, yeah. So it is clear that when you look at to the feasibility of indicators for soil health, we expect, of course, to have real, real testing sites, so real field experiments, and uh, work together with land managers, farmers. If, um, let's say, the proposed indicators are also user friendly in how they can be measured. So this is clearly um, uh, not a requirement, but it's, I think it's automatically by, by the tasks. Um, yes, we would like to cover a broad range of geographic regions and land uses. This is the, the main um, emphasis of the topic, because we have already quite a lot of work on agriculture even if indicators are not always reliable, but we totally lack uh, work on forests and urban soils and even semi-natural soil. Can we see other slider questions for other topics? I see now that there's a question for zero one. Are you expecting eight roadmaps, one for each mission objective? And I think I've seen a related one asking if the five million should be split into different projects or it should be just one. Marta, can you reply to, to those two? Uh, yes, with pleasure. Thank you, Annette. Um, it is expected one roadmap per uh, mission objective. That's clear. And uh, we have fixed, uh, we have proposed a budget for the whole topic. We don't uh, we don't take um, say actions in saying whether you have to split it or not. It's, uh, it's on the field of the proposer. How do they want to, let's say, better manage the budget available to deliver to what the topic is expected for? So in just one sentence, yes, we expect one roadmap per mission objective. And the budget, uh, let's say, allocation is up to the proposers in terms of the activities I intend to do according to the text of the mission or the call. Thank you. OK, thank you. Other questions for topics? Um, so we had one, two, three for topic number four. Yes. Um, so Mark, up to you to reply. Do you you mentioned diverse land use, um, forestry farming? Would you consider peatlands as well in the context of this call? Thanks, Annette. Yeah, obviously, uh, peatland would be uh, would be. Uh, 
considered uh, appropriate to uh, to deal with. I think that also there was a question whether farming practices could be considered as part of the toolbox. I would also kind of uh, say yes. And then there was a third question about uh, whether climate change uh, can be also considered as an important factor. I mean, here we are in socioeconomic aspects. Huh? So that's uh, that's um, the economic, uh, and that's uh, the social values, and uh, that values and the social social aspects. So um, I would not. I mean, this uh, question which relates to climate change. I think that this would be out of scope of uh, of the topic. I okay. think I have uh, replied to the three questions that I saw on the um, on topic four. Yes, yes, I think as well. Um, so just checking quickly if there's anything more than for number one or number three, would there have been less questions? But I don't see any. The last one I've seen was on in situ soil monitoring. And as I mentioned already, this is foreseen. Of course, the whole point of having reliable uh, methods for soil monitoring is about doing in situ, um, having indicators for in situ monitoring. Not only, but uh, this is a, a huge emphasis on this. So with this, um, it's an expected length of the project. This maybe um, applies to most of the um, topics. We don't provide any indication on the length of projects, but if you see what is expected, we normally, a research innovation action normally is anything from three to five years. So um, in the area of soil monitoring, soil changes don't materialize easily. And if you look at carbon, it takes years to, to track changes in soil carbon. So we do expect um, projects to last, I would say, four years. Um, well, but up to you to judge, but it's certainly a couple of years. It's not a short coordination support action. Okay, um, unless um, we don't have any really urgent, super burning questions, we would go on with the next block. We can come back at the very end if it's time to, to open questions. So a second slider poll would be. Oh, I see there's still a question for three, which I've always seen. I get a message. Yes, sorry for that. And then we, we um, close at the very end. Uh, we may come back. So to the last questions, could you elaborate on the difference between a normal cluster six proposal and a soil mission proposal? This we keep for the end. And now maybe a Giuseppe can reply to um, from soil microbioma to gut microbioma. Is this focused on technological properties or nutritional composition? Should nutrition scientists be involved in the consortium? Uh, many thanks again for this uh, interesting question. Uh, I would say that it's more related to the nutrition composition, to the nutritional composition of, of the of the food. Uh, when the technological priorities uh, are meant to to be linked with the uh, food processing, for instance, so soil microbiome very important. A gut microbiome is very important too, and uh, it is linked to nutritional composition. I would say thanks. OK, so thank you. So I think now we really should give some time for the other speakers of the four uh, projects. Um, you may have already seen the slide of Paul. What is your field of expertise? It's just a sort of curiosity to see who is sitting with us today. And to get a good uh, glim glimpse of your background. Let's go ahead. So we have a lot of soil scientists, academics sitting in the audience. Some food scientists, agricultural expertises there as well. Agroecology. Um, I 
I can't see all the small dots properly, but um, I see that most of the people sitting in the audience today so know about soils, work on soils, are related to agriculture. It's not so much apparently um, people working on urban soils, maybe the geologists or forestry, or they are in the minority. OK, thank you so much for this, uh, this overview. We'll keep it in any case. It's useful for us to see um, the, uh, the breadth of participants. Now, we will go on with the next topic, which is Horizon um, Soil 0205, Incentives in Business Models for Soil Health. And again, you will see <laughs> me uh, speaking in a video. I will now present the topic Soil 0205. It is called Incentives in Business Models for Soil Health. It is actually quite a strategic topic in the sense that it is about involving the private sector in promoting soil health. As you know, soils deliver a range of vital ecosystem services. In addition to producing sufficient amounts of biomass for food and other products, soils help us avoiding floods and droughts. They also host a large amount, a range of biodiversity, store carbon, and deliver cultural services. Society is increasingly recognizing the importance of soil health and the risks and consequences of land degradation. Still, land managers, including farmers, are not sufficiently remunerated for supporting the delivery of soil ecosystem services. Incentives are therefore needed that reward production and consumption patterns that promote sustainable land use or that help sharing the risks and costs of land restoration. Selected projects should therefore increase awareness about why we should invest in soil health. The work should help to increase opportunities for investing in soils and for land managers to create new avenues for diversifying the income. Project outcomes are also expected to support the creation of new partnerships and new value chains based on products with a lower footprint, a lower soil footprint. Ultimately, this will help consumers to make more informed decisions. So concretely, what do we expect projects to do? Funded projects should provide an overview of existing business models for promoting soil health. These examples can come either from within or outside Europe. Examples should illustrate basically the range of options available to promote, for example, sustainable soil management or products that are based on practices that are uh, based on sustainable soil management. These, ex these models could also promote consumption and certification practices that are conducive to soil health, the reuse of land, or sustainable soil management in the context of the EU taxonomy regulation and the sustainable finance disclosure regulation. In a further step, projects should illustrate particularly good examples for investments in soil health or help identify innovators that can inspire others to follow. And then in addition to mapping the landscape of existing business models, projects should also co-design new models for soil health and test those so that uh, good experiences can be scaled up. And then, um, so based on these existing and new models, projects should put together a toolbox for incentives and for blending finance streams. It is important that the toolbox is tailored to the needs of various stakeholders. So this can be farmers, foresters, but it's also um, public bodies that manage land and urban areas or industries that want to engage in soil restoration. Also, the business model should allow to address a range of soil ecosystem services and land uses. 
Another strand of activities concerns the development of recommendations for policy measures that can support the proposed business models. And finally, we expect projects to reach out to a wide audience, including through the development of promotion material, by carrying out events, and by establishing communities of practice or roundtables that bring together soil health investors. Now, with regard to the budget, we foresee to finance two projects, each with up to 5 million euro. What um, is important to note are the following conditions. Firstly, we ask topics to apply the multi-actor approach. The multi-actor approach requires that consortia bring together a mix of stakeholders with complementary expertise, and in particular, that they bring together the end users of results. In the case of this topic, this could include researchers, land managers, farmers, foresters, the food and other industries, insurers, banks, or carbon trading entities. Then consortia should um, build on existing studies for carbon farming, in particular those carried out uh, or commissioned uh, by the European Commission. And this is, for example, the recently published technical guidance handbook for carbon farming. And finally, projects should seek to make use of digital technologies as much as possible to advance the area. And with this, um, I'd like to close. I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you. So then uh, let's go straight away with the next topic, which is presented by Ariana Passa. It's about about engaging with municipalities and regions. Topic 0206. Good afternoon. I'm presenting uh, the World Programme 2021 topic uh, Soil 0206. Engage with and activate municipalities and regions to protect and restore soil health. It is a coordination and support action. This topic is um, contributing to the European Green Deal objectives, to uh, the European Commission commitment to democracy and equality, and of course it is contributing to the mission a soil deal for Europe, in particular to its objective eight, which is uh, soil literacy, communication and citizen engagement. The expected outcomes that should result from uh, this uh, topic is an increased and more structured dialogue at the regional and local levels involving both stakeholders and citizens, um, leading to the co-creation of solutions for the protection and restoration of soil health. Um, another expected outcome is the increased awareness and understanding of the value of soil of the challenges that uh, soil faces and the drivers that cause these challenges. Drivers should be uh, considered both um, in their biophysical and socio-economic uh, dimensions. It is also expected an increased cooperation between public and private actors um, that should cooperate to implement solution uh, for the protection and restoration of soil health. And it is also expected um, an effective exchange between municipalities and regions uh, in view of making the best use of opportunities provided uh, by the European funds. Activities under uh, the scope of this topic are several. Several. First of all, uh, the project should support uh, um, municipalities and regions to identify, mobilize and engage a critical mass of both stakeholders and citizens to substantially step up the protection and restoration of uh, soil health. Uh, then uh, they should explore with regional and local authorities opportunities for making better use of EU funds uh, for sustainable uh, soil management. Uh, they should also take into account um, the programming options that have already been taken at the member state and uh, 
uh, regional uh, levels. Uh, then, um, municipalities and regions should be supported uh, to co-design uh, strategies and action for the protection and restoration of soil health, and these actions should be um, co-designed uh, with citizens and if possible also to um, be um, co-implemented with citizen. Ideally, um, these strategies should be um, included into the research and innovation strategy for strategies for uh, smart specialization for sustainability. Um, then um, we expect uh, to, with this topic, um, to develop and implement effective participatory processes uh, which stimulate an extensive dialogue on soil and land related activities at the local and regional level. Um, this means that participants um, of these participatory processes should be equipped uh, with appropriate information and tools and the results of these processes uh, should be followed up uh, by decision makers. Um, then um, the, uh, these, the projects financed under uh, this topic should uh, enhance knowledge sharing among municipalities and region uh, for the uh, under uh, always in the area of, uh, of protecting and restoring soil health. They should strengthen inclusive and extensive um, um, European networks of, uh, of municipalities and regions for pursuing citizen identified soil related objectives. Here we don't uh, uh, expect to create new networks, but really to um, strengthen the existing um, channels uh, that municipalities and regions use to, um, to cooperate. So under this, uh, this topic, there should also be uh, um, um, an increase of the capacity of these networks to contribute to uh, the objectives of the uh, soil mission. Um, finally, projects financed under this topic should include a task to collaborate with the other projects financed funded under uh, these topics to ensure complementarity, synergies and a clear communication to stakeholders around the open uh, calls for third party uh, funding. Indeed, these, uh, um, the indicative budget for these topics this topic is 10 million. So uh, um, ideally um, three projects should be funded and they should um, cooperate uh, among, um, among each other. And uh, especially because this, um, this topic is open uh, for cascade funding. And this uh, opportunity was um, included uh, to be to allow the project to um, to leave the door open in case um, municip some municipalities uh, decides uh, decide to join the project um, after the very uh, um, beginning. It is important to note that this uh, project is supposed to be implemented with a multi-actor approach uh, because uh, regional and local authorities should be involved from an early stage. Uh, projects should uh, look for a balanced representation of uh, regions across the EU and uh, associated countries. And as I said before, um, this uh, topic is uh, open um, to provide financial support uh, to third parties. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ariana. 
and uh, we will jump straight away to topic 0207 on national engagement sessions to support the establishment of Soil Health Living Labs. And this one will be presented by Paola Eulalio. Please go ahead, Paola. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you, Annette. So today, yes, I'm going to present you the main elements, the work topic, national engagement sessions, and support to the establishment of soil health living labs. So the instrument selected for this topic is coordination and support action. The topic supports several EU policies. First of all, the mission of uh, a soil deal for Europe, and in particular, its target to set up a 100 uh, soil health living labs by 2027. Also, the EU Green Deal objectives, and in particular, the implementation of its new soil strategy and the farm to fork strategy, the long term vision for rural areas, the common agricultural policy, and it also contributes uh, to the international sustainable development goals. So the selected project under this topic is expected to contribute to all of the following outcomes. A common understanding among the, among the potential applicants of the concept of uh, soil health living labs and uh, also of the most pressing soil health challenges, including awareness of the selection criteria for the living labs and lighthouses, which is established in the implementation plan for the soil mission. This project uh, that will be selected should also lead to an enhanced awareness and skills of uh, the potential applicants on how to set living labs and run them, and to improve access to a pool of capacity building material. It is expected uh, that a high quality and collaborative and multi-actor consortia will be formed to prepare and support the community of stakeholders that will take part in the future of the living labs. The consortia will bring different actors together in joint proposals within the living lab areas or across borders. And uh, this will be in order to form the transnational clusters of living labs. Next slide, please. So as regards to the scope, the successful proposal will organize a stream of support activities including two sets of national engagement sessions. And uh, through these sessions, the project should build ownership of the soil missions objectives, as well as the definitions, the concepts and criteria for soil health living labs. It should raise awareness on the key challenges uh, that we are facing with, with soil health, uh, which will be different in different regions. And also it should steer a conversation on those areas or regions where the first living labs will be set up. It should provide key information and capacity building material on the living lab approach and how to start and how to run them. It should provide coaching se sessions to the potential applicants to start testing and improving their ideas. So it should really identify the, who are the potential applicants and facilitate the matchmaking between them in various countries. And uh, in this way, it should support the creation of the transnational proposals for the living labs. In terms of budget, uh, the estimated budget for the project is, uh, for, for, the pro for the project, but there will be only one project funded under this topic is 3 million euros. And uh, finally, I would also like to highlight some important conditions that must be considered. So the project should follow a multi-actor approach and a co-creation approach as well. It should build on previous projects, such as the Horizon 2020 uh, Soil Mission Support Project, SMS, and on the former topic published under Horizon Europe 21 for the soil mission, so the 0101. It should also engage with relevant innovation networks, such as the EAP Agri and the European Institute of Technology. Um, it is important maybe also to mention that it should work closely with uh, in cooperation with national and regional authorities. And I think with this I end my presentation. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Paula. It was very clear. Now we come to the last topic of this work program, 08. It is about next generation soil advisors, topic 0208. It will be presented by Sandra Heinzelmann. Sandra, please go ahead. 
Uh, thank you, Annette. Uh, so last but not least, I will present here the topic 0208, uh, Next Generation Soil Advisors, and it is a research and innovation action. Um, so why do we have this topic? Land managers and landowners often do not sufficiently apply or promote practices that maintain or restore soil health because of a lack of knowledge and tailored advice on local adapted practices. So the objective of this topic is to promote the emergence of specialized soil advisors and to strengthen the skills of existing advisors and view of promoting the uptake of innovations for sustainable land management practices. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, this one. Um, no, the previous one. Um, as the other topics, um, under the mission, this topic also has to be understood uh, within the policy context of the European Green Deal and its relevant strategies, for example, the farm to fork, the biodiversity and the soil strategies, and of course, the objectives of the soil lean mission. Um, I think the previous slide, please. Thank you. Um, the project that will be funded is expected to contribute to all of the following outcomes. Um, advisory services should be strengthened in both their knowledge and skill base in order to provide impartial advice on soil and their sustainable management. This has to be based on a thorough understanding of soil functions and ecosystem services. New forms of advice are being tested and established while making effective use of digitization and also new models of advisor farm data interaction. Then land managers and other practitioners have increased opportunities to access knowledge and to exchange experience. The farming sector should be better equipped to contribute to meeting the targets of the farm to fork and EU soil strategies, especially in regards to the management of nutrients. Furthermore, more interactive and effective agricultural and forestry knowledge and innovation systems are in place. And finally, local and regional authorities should be in a position to integrate considerations on soil health into spatial planning and decision making. The next slide, please. So to achieve these outcomes, the project should cover following activities. The project should identify, map and connect also within the framework of the Agricultural Knowledge and Innovation System ACIS, the main actors which are relevant to the development, acquisition, exchange and application of knowledge to improve soil health related practices. Then furthermore, screening existing educational resources and tools which are applicable to the various aspects of land management and the prevention of soil degradation. Develop test, develop, test and share best practices on curricula, tools and methods to strengthen the skills and competence of soil advisors while taking due account of novel approaches for interactive innovation and the potential of digital technologies creating testing grounds for new forms of soil advice and tools, peer-to-peer -to -peer knowledge exchange and practitioner-driven experimentation. In particular, on the management of nutrients, soil, organic carbon and biodiversity. This task should be undertaken by making use, where available, of the FAST tool developed in member states as part of the common agricultural policy and by assessing its effectiveness and benefits. Develop a comprehensive toolbox of resources for the training of soil advisors and their interaction with land managers. Furthermore, propose strategies to sustain and update training outputs and tools which were developed and, comply and compiled during the project. Um, about the top um, funding, the funding allocated to this topic is 5 million and we expect to fund one project. The proposed activities should take due account of the different situations of advisory services in EU member states and associated countries and ensure wide access. This also regards of language uh, to main resources for soil advisors across Europe. Additionally, it should cover advisory services, not just in agriculture, but also in other land uses, such as urban and forest land. 
And it is important to note that the project should follow the multi-actor approach and make use of the opportunities provided by EIP Agri, DIACIS, and the European Soil Observatory. And finally, it should take uh, into consideration results of relevant Horizon 2020 projects. And that was for this topic. Back to Annette. Yes, thank you, all of, all of you, so much for this last block of four questions. And I think that we have now a couple of, of really, um, I would say, um, curiosity of people first on the Living Lab approach, which we will discuss now in a minute, and then on specific technical questions as regards the other topics. Um, I see now what will come first. So it seems that the, uh, the ones most voted are related to Living Labs and Lighthouses Paula. I will try and read them out and then we'll leave the floor to you to, to reply. Also take into account some of the questions in the previous block. So the first one would be, how does the application process for Living Lab Lighthouse work? This is the one we had before already. So how are the Living Labs chosen? Is there a tool to link up with other participants in order to create a group of 10 to 20 sites for living labs. So it's all really about how do we get together to, to apply for proposals. Um, maybe we take this one first and then we go to the next one, which is also about 07. Paola, up to you. Yes, hello. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, it's fine. So, um, yes, yeah, thanks for the question. So, I, uh, in fact, this is the, the the presentation I gave today. So, this topic uh, for the engagement sessions is like a first uh, uh, preparatory preparatory actions that have to be done uh, that are funded now under the Work Program 21, and they are to really there to foresee the, the engagement of the community and ensure that uh, there is a good understanding uh, of the criteria, uh, that the people meet each other so that there is a mis, uh, mix match and that um, people really um, get together to form the partnerships that will uh, then apply. So, so this work program is scheduled now uh, and it will um, be uh, evaluated in 2022 and the first engagement sessions, uh, we predict them to be um, done in 20, early 2023 and the second one more towards the end of 23. Uh, and then from there on, there will be um, the, the actual living labs that will be founded through dedicated calls. Um, for projects. The first call uh, is expected um, under Horizon Work Program 23-24 and then there will be progressively calls every year to uh, scale up, huh, to, to, to really get to these 100 living labs that uh, were presented in the beginning of the session. Um, so I think I, I answer more or less on the, on the how the, the, the process is uh, to, to found the, the, the living labs. I don't remember if there was one other part of the question. Um. So, sorry, I think there was a question on participation. Um, who can apply and about examples. So this one here, could you please provide us with some examples uh, yes. of sites under living labs? So which kind of sites and which kind of applicants? Um, we foresee to participate in living labs. So thank you. So yes, for the examples, I was thinking more. Um, if uh, I invite you maybe to to check on the ENOL, so the European Network of Living Labs, it's the official body for the living labs here in Europe, um, and this was also I think mentioned in the presentation. Um, and there you can see uh, really by uh, topic the different living labs that that uh, that are ongoing now the projects that are ongoing so they are on smart cities on climate for soil there is not much yet done i don't know if you want to complete annette with uh, uh with some other elements this question yeah i think we'll go back just to the questions because there are many many things uh, <laughs> all together um so the issue is that we do have of course um we have examples of living labs 
However, what is really important is the following, and this is why this engagement session topic is coming about. In the mission, we provide a definition of a living lab and lighthouse, and you have a specific annex with criteria what would qualify as a living lab. This is not necessarily what existing living labs um, are exactly doing. So we do have examples. If you go to the NOL site, as Paula said, you find them. But be sure that whatever we fund in subsequent work programs should comply to some criteria that we have established under the mission. This is really important to note. Now, this will be all part of the engagement sessions that the consortium that um, gets the grant sets up wide training sessions, provides information material and spreads the gospel of what is a living lab, what is a lighthouse under the mission and how can you apply in subsequent, subsequent work programs. This is all what the topic is about. So that will hopefully clarify and help the community to organize, to find partners and to develop sound proposals for future living labs and lighthouses. So if we go back to the to the um, Slido questions, there was something on the participation. How can a local civil society? Uh, so how can local civil society, citizen organizations join living labs, lighthouses? How to engage advisors, teachers, farmers and so on. So this will be all, as I mentioned, explain um, depend on the scope of the living labs. If you are in a rural area looking at a specific problem in agriculture, you will have automatically farmers, advisors, maybe some businesses. If you're looking more into urban areas, urban gardening, green spaces, um, food related living labs, then you would have more citizens, urban citizens that are interested in these issues. It's all bottom up and inclusive and there's no, um, there's no, how shall I say, um, guideline who should apply because nobody is excluded. It's the other way around. OK, now if we look at other questions on living labs, then maybe Paula could add if there's something missing. Um, is there a template on the size and scope on what an actual living lab should be? Paula, would you like to, to react on that one? Um, yes, uh, as far as I know, there is no template and no limitation. So the idea is to really be uh, transdisciplinary and uh, try to focus on the, all the main issues and the main challenges uh, um, on soil health uh, in many countries. So we are focusing uh, um, uh, to really uh, cover the 27 member states and associated countries and, and uh, to include um, um, all the um, possible stakeholders to um, to cover also all the areas uh, that are affecting the soil health. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Complete, yes. No, I think it was clear. So this, I see a question on 0 05 and 0 06. So first on 0 05, this was a topic on the business models for soil health. Can you explain how the projects could integrate the concept of carbon farming. In fact, carbon farming, um, I think was mentioned, is mentioned in the soil, in, in the topic, because when looking at business models, we're really asking applicants and proposers to consider all types of business models that could promote soil health. And of course, carbon farming is such one. So we have in the topic the example of payment for ecosystem services, carbon farming. Then there could be also examples where the food chain jumps in and through a certifi uh, certification scheme, for example, promotes farmers to produce in certain ways and then installs a scheme or a quality label across the food chain. So all these type of business models are possible and should be explored. And we would be, of course, very interested in you as applicants providing as many ideas as possible on how we can use existing instruments to promote, to create business models and how to create new business models that are not there yet 
do we need more inst other types of incentives? So that kind of um, testing is part of the topic. And now I think that there's a question for Ariana on 06, engagement with municipalities. Are individual municipalities and regions rather associated and beneficiary of third party grants? Or should some also be involved as partners in the consortium? Uh, so, um, thank you, Annette, for the question. Um, it's ideally uh, municipalities and regions uh, should be involved uh, in the consortium from uh, an early stage, so uh, already from the beginning, at the moment of presenting uh, the proposal. We know that this also depends on the political will, so this is why we left open um, the possibility uh, to involve other mon um, municipalities and region also in a uh, later stage um, and with a um, somehow a minor role with the third uh, um, with the cascade funding uh, a other uh, partner should be part of the consortium we are uh, also looking for uh, specialist uh, specialist in uh, civic and engagement in participation with the uh, citizen citizen engagement expert are also welcome and uh, um, to be meaningful, the process should be also fit with the right information. So, uh, soil scientists should be there. So, this is open also for universities and uh, research institutes. Annette, you are mute. Sorry. Yes, no, this was very clear. Thank you, Ariana. Um, Paula. Your topic is very popular, or there are many questions around. So, um, do you foresee a lighthouse to demonstrate soil decontam decontamination practices? I don't imagine this since the time frame for decontamination is limited. So, this very specific one. If I may, I take also a second on 07, which is most member states have no or little experience with living labs. Which national actors would be the right participants in the project and organize the session? I think it's quite a general question. Please go ahead, Paula. Yes. Um, yes, uh, really, it's, uh, on this one, if um, if you have a, a more educated answer, Annette, for the for these questions, I I can think um, um, so the the national uh, research um, institutes and um, uh, ministries um, will surely be um, uh, have to be reached out. But uh, I can I cannot think now on which other partners. So if you if you would like to to take this one. They're talking about uh, experience with living labs, so no one has really got a lot of experience with soil living labs for the moment, so this has to be built. Uh, absolutely. We we discussed a lot in the, with the mission board when we developed the concept of living labs and lighthouses. Um, who can take the lead in organizing this implementing? In this case, a collective effort that we need to do now. As Paula said, uh, living labs exist on soil health less, but you have in member states, depending on the member states, you have different types of expertise and structures, and it will depend say, on the member states, but you have first, of course, on soil, soil health, you have research institutions, and you have citizen science initiatives that are used to work with citizens on scientific areas. Then you have, of course, also all, let's say, the um, uh, social science expertise, whether it's an academic sector or also in, I would say, citizen science driven initiatives that are used to work with a wide range of stakeholders and in a participatory way. So all these institutions are hopefully mobilized to apply to this project. And then we expect also the help, the support of member states when we organize national information sessions. It can be ministries at national, but also regional level or even local authorities. Given the time frame, the budget 
we expect a um, rather limited number of engagement sessions. So you will have to go, I think, to cooperate with um, national or regional administrations to get the support for, for bigger events. On the other questions, um, with the decontamination, Paola, do you have any view on this? Sorry, I was uh, not really. No, it's a good question. Yeah, uh, it's it's a what we say before. It's a bottom up. Living labs and lighthouses are bottom up initiatives. If there are applicants that want to work on soil decontamination, I think this will be very welcome and would show very much how we can use living labs in urban areas to promote soil health. About the timing. There's no limit. A living lab could be four, five, six years. It will depend on, on the topic. But we hope, of course, that we get um, examples in many areas in different um, sectors. So I hope we can still take the next two to three questions before we close. Ariana, <laughs> again, <laughs> what is expected? to be supported by third parties in the topic on engaging with um, municipalities. Any examples? I think I have already replied to this question, but um, let's try to be more clear. When we uh, wrote this topic, uh, we imagined that some municipalities and regions could be uh, part of the consortium from the beginning, but uh, as the uh, time to prepare the proposal is very short. We are um, aware that um, some municipalities and regions could be reached out in a later stage. So the idea to um, have the um, financial support for third parties is that if in a later stage when the project is already running, there are some municipalities and regions that want to join uh, the project, they um, somehow can find this possibility uh, because the, the, the topic is open for, for uh, cascade fundings. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this one, I think we should give uh, the floor to Sandra. Um, for the um, soil advisors, who will be a typical, who will be typical partners in this project? Um, and I had seen another one on zero eight. As the users still under development, what tasks could we propose at this stage to ensure collaboration? Can you reply to to those, Sandra? Um, yes. So for the first one, um, we would assume, of course if possible, already soil advisors to build on the experience. And also those who actually in the end where you implement it, so land managers. And what is also very important for us is that um, you have actors from social science and behavioral science, because the idea in the end is to get um, the uptake of sustainable practices with the help of so soil advisors. And then for the second question, um, at the moment, I would say um, the exchange of experience. But um, I don't know if Annette wants to add something on that, what um, with the use, so what can be there and done there yet? Well, we'll see how user develops once the project starts is a year from now. So we'll have a better idea, but the user is also very much um, a platform where you can share training material, for example. So that could be an option to share training material and to uh, even run and test training sessions. This is something where the GRC and the user are very, very good at. We're coming almost to the end, and I wonder if there's a burning question we should still take. Um, so I think on the last one, maybe um, this is a fair question. What is the relation between the mission living labs and the agroecology living labs? And with that one, we would close the session. And if we have time, there will be still a final Slido question, but um, then we have to finish, unfortunately. Paula. Yes, thank you. So um, 
the relation is uh, yes, of course, there will be synergy, synergies and we will ensure that these synergies are, are considered for any activities that are done um, at uh, the partnership or at the mission side concerning living labs that relates to agricultural soils. So um, I think both the living labs will be able to, to to, to use or to benefit from the knowledge or from the information that uh, are uh, arising from the uh, partnerships. And uh, likewise, the other way around, there will be a room for synergy and for collaboration. Mm -hmm. yeah. OK, there are many, many more questions popping up, I'm afraid, but we will have to, to close this very interesting session. Your questions have helped us actually to, to understand where we can expect many more um, needs for clarification. As you know, this in the portal, funding tenders portal, um, a space where you can continue asking questions and we will reply to those in the course of um, the application. The final um, action today is just to hear from you which topic was the most relevant for you. And um, if you could reply to that, that would help us a bit also to assess maybe uh, the interest in topics and maybe the number of, applic of applications. So the poll is running and we see what comes up. Um, so, so far the topic on So it indicates seems to be on the top. Followed by the link between soil health and food. Incentives business models for soil health. Well, it's still unstable. It seems from the numbers, there's no one big um, preference. So it seems that your interests are quite spread across the various topics, which is good news in a way because it also reflects that um, uh, the topics are relevant to, to a wide audience as, as you are. So we will keep your questions um, from Slido. Um, please continue asking whatever is unclear through the funding tenant portal. We'll keep also your replies and we thank you so much for your attention, for your interest in this first work program call. We hope to have many good proposals and we hope that we can then have a very exciting start of the mission and um, start what was presented today as a really journey to, to yeah, better, more sustainable soil management, soil health, and maybe also different ways of undertaking research and innovation. Thank you so much to speakers and to you, the audience. And bye-bye. <laughs>